let us help you reach your peak in retirement. It's time for Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee. Hello and welcome to Retirement Elevated Podcast with Sean Lee. I am your host, Sean Lee. I am managing partner here at Elevated Retirement Group with our offices in uh, Salt Lake City. We've got an office down in St. George. And today it is me solo without Mark Killian. Well, not necessarily solo. I've got uh, Daniel Algeyer, CFP, here with me. Uh, he's one of the advisors here in our office. He is a certified financial planner, and he helps me do a lot of our planning here internally in our office, and then also does uh, planning for clients throughout the, the valley in the southern part of, of Utah. So, Daniel, welcome into the into the podcast today. Uh, thanks, man. Yeah, a little bit, little bit different today. We're going to go through... Uh, not just the the numbers of financial planning. We're not going to talk about, hey, what does your math problem look like, or you know, what what do you have to save in order to get to retirement? We're going to talk about the mindset and, and transitioning from those working years into the the mindset and shift of of retirement planning. Right. Yeah, I think it's a you know a really crucial thing to talk about as people transition because they've, you know, they've always had this end goal in mind to retire. And then once they finally get there, they need to make sure they're mentally ready for that too. Cause it's a change, right? It, you know, you used to go up and you used to wake up and go to work and now you can wake up and do whatever you want. I had a, one of the families we represent tell me, you know, Sean, he goes, you know what day tomorrow is? I was like, well, yeah, it's it's Thursday. He goes, nope, not for me. It's Saturday. He goes, because every day in retirement is is Saturday, and he's he's really started to embrace embrace that retirement mindset. And and when we look at at really building out plans, and maybe let's start here today as uh, talking about, you know, when when you start to look at building kind of your one your most unique financial plan, like the the plan that is going to have, you know the most effect on your life. There's really two areas that we look at. And, and the first area is the, the math problem, right? It's the, what are, what are all the, what's all the data points? What is, what does it look like from, you know, what are our sources? What are our needs? And then what are our resources to put out the plan together? But really that's, that's kind of the easy part. You know, the math, the mathematics behind planning is easy. Understanding the mindset and what you're going to do in retirement. That's the hard part. Because like you said, so many people are tied into, I get up in the morning, I go to work, I go home, I spend some time with my family, and then recycle, I do it again. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I'm in that in that situation as well. You know, I get up, come to work, go home, uh, make sure the kids don't break anything, and then, then go to bed <laughs> and kind of repeat. So, you know, as, you know, obviously my life's a lot different than somebody about to enter into retirement, but... You know, there's a lot of association with your job and the things you do each day that that make up your kind of um, yourself, not your self worth, but just kind of give you that image of of what you do. So, if you know from one from one day to the next, if you stop working and stop doing that, now you almost got to find a new identity. So, what do you, what do you look like in retirement? What does retirement Daniel look like compared to working Daniel look like? So, I mean, every day is a Saturday. That's pretty nice, but you know, you got to find that that get the uh, Get ready for that transition and prepare for that. So find out what keeps you keeps you going. That makes it kind of feel important there. So. Well, and I think there's there's lots of different things that we can do in retirement, right? There's, you know, do you do you give to charities? Do you give your time, your your energy to to different to different projects or whatever it may be, or maybe it's starting a new business, or you know maybe it's golfing five days a week. Uh, maybe it's you know road tripping or traveling to you know we represent a family that they they travel do a three-week bike tour in a different country each year you know take their pedal bikes and and ride the countryside of greece and, and a lot of that those are all fun things to do but what we don't want to get caught up into is the mundane day-to-day -day. And, and what i mean by that is this is probably five years ago now talking about this mindset shift that you have to go into in retirement. This gentleman was sitting in the front and he raised his hand and he said, Sean, that's, a, I know exactly what you mean. And, and he said, I retired. I didn't have a plan. I had a financial idea of what I was going to do, but I didn't have a mental plan of what I was going to do with my time. 
He said, I could only scrub the toilets so much. I could only golf with my buddies so much because half of my friends were, re- were still working. My wife was still working. And I got to a point to where I couldn't take it anymore. I had to go back to work. And it wasn't because he needed to financially. It was because he couldn't mentally handle that transition to retirement. He wasn't he wasn't prepared. Yeah, he was. He was like, uh, he got to the edge of the cliff and he jumped off and he's a little bit more scared than he thought. He decided to grab onto something and go back. Yeah, it's a, it's a big change, right? Your whole life gets kind of flipped around. You know, if you work in a standard 40-hour week and let's say you take two weeks off a year, that gives you about 2,000 hours that you've got to fill up with time, right? And like I said, you can only do the same thing so many times and, and get bored of it, right? So, yeah, making sure that you've got that plan in place of, of what retirement is going to look like. And that could be something that you plan for 10 years, 15 years before, you know, or even as you transition into the, you know, looking at it, say, I'm, I'm, I'm a year or two out. You know, I like my job, but maybe I'd like to do some volunteer work. You know, I've never had the the time or the ability to volunteer work at a certain charity, at, you know, the community, a church, whatever it may be. But but now you've got that time to fill to fill up with volunteer work. Or, you know, maybe you spend a little bit more time with family. Uh, you know, if there's you know, grandkids or other family around, maybe do a little bit more time visiting them and and making sure you can get to there. If they have sporting events or different activities, you can you can spend there and and get there. And yeah, I know my my my, my grandpa. He retired. He's been retired for a long time, and I know he, he really enjoys going down. I don't know how often he does it, or obviously not right now because of the, the current situation, but he would go down to the city, uh, the senior center uh, in the city he lives in, and he'd have lunch down there with all the other seniors. So they'd just get together and chat and talk about old things, and, and he really enjoyed that because it gave him a, you know, kind of a little community that uh, he, he belonged to. So he had you know go down and meet new friends and talk to new people. So... Yeah, you know, finding something like that to keep you involved and around other people, I think, is a good deal. You know, it's it's funny you talk about your grandpa. My my grandpa passed away a couple of years ago, and I knew when I'd go back home. Uh, well, even when I lived when I was younger, when I was in Rock Springs, I could find my grandpa one of two places. One, I could find him in his backyard, sitting in a chair overlooking one of the main roads. He just watched traffic. He just hung out. He just watched traffic. Or two, I could find him in the mall or as time went on, we could find him at Walmart on the outside sitting on a bench. And the reason that I could find him those two places is that he would just go and watch people. Oh, yeah. He would just go and, and, and see all the different people that were at the mall or all the different characters that were coming into the stores. And he, that was, that was kind of what he did. And everybody knew that he was going to, he was going to be there. And that was, you know, that was kind of towards his latter years of, of life. But I think it's really important to, to come into retirement with a mapped out plan on how your time is going to be spent. You don't get any more time. Right. Like you have a fi- I can't go back in time and say, Hey man, I wish I would have handled that differently with, you know, in whatever scenario, or I wish I would have done more going into retirement. You have, a, you only have a certain period of time left. Right. And, and so understanding how you're going to use that time, I think is, is, critical for your mental well-being right yeah and i think a big part of it too is it it's not a one-size-fits-all you know just kind of relating this to kids we have a couple three kids and they're all a little different they all like their own things they like to do their own you know different things and i think that's the same for people when they come into retirement they need to to recognize what they want to do you know just because your friend down the street does something or you know, your your brother or sister or somebody might be doing something. Maybe that's not how you want to spend your time. So it's it's important that you find that out. And then I also think another part is, you know, you know, staying active. You know, and and you know, with that time, you got to remember your health. You know, there's obviously things that come along later in life, but you know, as long as you can maintain your your health and you you know your mobility and your activity, I think that's really going to help you feel a little bit more fulfilled in retirement years because you're able to, you know, still get up and go do things and, and kind of, you know, take advantage of the, you know, activities outside or indoors or whatever it may be. But, you know, those are, it was important that you, you consider those factors as well. You want to come out into retirement guns blazing. Right. You know, a lot of people do. And unfortunately in the pandemic, it's, you know, well, I couldn't travel as much. And in a lot of the, on the financial side, a lot of the plans that we build are, are built to have those extra you know, spend that extra money doing certain things. And, and now 
you know, money's been stockpiling and they haven't been able to do that. So I, I feel like as things start to open up, we're going to see a big outflow of cash, like people traveling, doing things and, and getting those experiences, which is great. As long as the, the financial plan and the financial side can cover it. You know, one thing that, that we talk about, you know, if you're a year out from retirement, it's act as if, right? Mm-hmm. Act as if you're retired already and do the things that, that you want to do and spend your time the way that you want to spend it with the safety net of your income. And that does two things. One, it starts to get you into the mindset of, okay, I, this is how I'm going to spend my time via charities and traveling and things like that. But two, you also get a pretty good gauge on how much you're actually going to spend mm-hmm. in, in retirement with that safety net, we'll say, air quotes, safety net of your, of your income stream. Right. Yeah. You need to make sure everything stays within, I mean, the budget, right? As long as you're, you know, you, you can get a good gauge to say, well, this last year we've spent X amount of dollars on travel and that was a good amount of travel. I would, you know, feel comfortable doing that for the next coming years. Then you can plug that into your plan and make sure it works. Cause you know, you, you have that nest egg that you built up over a long period of time, you know, saving, being disciplined and, and doing that. And then, you know, as you, as you turn and start to spend that down, you want to make sure to spend down at a, an appropriate rate. You don't want to go, you know, kick the doors open and go, you know, spend, spend it all in one year. Cause then you'd be in a world of hurt, but you got to make sure that it's that what you're wanting to do is achievable with what you have. And that year before prepping for it, I think it's a great, great advice to get people on the, the right track. Well, and if you're pulling out 15, 20 grand to travel or to, to live life or to you know, join that country club that you wanted to join, but you never did, you know, understanding how you're going to withdraw those funds to, to still maintain because we've had a pretty good run the last 10 years, even including COVID, you know, that the markets, you know, have continued to go up with no end in sight. You know, there, there's that fear that, oh, well, the market's going to pull back. But how you generate your cash flow and how you generate your income to accomplish the things that you want in life, you know, because that's all money is. That's all, that's all you're saving for in retirement is to, is to build experiences, whatever that, whatever that looks like. But how you withdraw funds to create those experiences becomes just as important as what those experiences are. A hundred percent agree. Cause then it also gives you that peace of mind knowing that you can go out and spend that money cause you've got a, a strategy and a plan in place to cover those. You know, you're, you're pulling money out in an efficient way possible, you know, managing the accounts that you have and you know, the taxes, the tax implications associated with withdrawals to make sure that you're covering what you need and that it's not going to, you know, be, um, you know, negative in the, in latter years when, when things happen, let's say, you know, with your required distribution, you know, if you don't prepare for that prior to age 72, uh, you might hit that time frame and be a little surprised if you have to pull out a, a, an amount higher than what you need just because it's not planned for. So, yeah, yeah, structuring how you pull out your money and that also gives you that peace of mind as you go into the retirement, knowing that, you know, the plan's in place as long as we stick to this plan, you know, given what the market can do, it's going to do what it does. Uh, we'll be able to to make it through and and live the life that we want. Right. So we'll go ahead and wrap up the the podcast today, Daniel. But any any parting thoughts on the mindset heading into retirement? And I'll I'll give a few, and then we'll we'll wrap up. No, really, it's just like I said before. It's just making sure you kind of prepare yourself for what it is, and and if plans change and pivot, like you say, you've got plenty of free time, and you want to go back to do part time work, you want to start a business, or you want to do something else. I think that's that's totally okay is, you know, people just understand that whatever their retirement looks like, as far as their time spent, it's going to be different. So just making sure that what you're doing is, is satisfying to you and fulfilling. I think the, the main important thing for a person is as they transition to making sure that they, they have that, that sense of identity for yep. sure. I, I couldn't agree more. I think so. Well, parting, you know, action items for, for those that are listening that are maybe preparing for retirement and aren't quite sure what mindset you, you need to go into or what your mindset is going to be. Financial side is, is important. That's the, that math problem, get that side done, but also start to, to create those action items or, or things that you're going to do to spend your time in retirement and make sure you have a good understanding on, on what that's going to be. Second one is just act as if act as if you're retired for that year before retirement, do the trips that you want to do, do, do the things that you want to do, have the activities that you, that you want, you know, within, 
within reason, right? You're still, mm-hmm. you're still employed and you're still going to have a job to do, but, but spend that time as if you are mindset wise already into retirement. That's it for today, guys. We, we appreciate everybody listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or any of those other podcasting apps or whatever you want to call it. Daniel, thanks for, thanks for joining me today. And at some point, we'll have you back. I sure appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Investment advisory services offered through Elevated Capital Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor.